Oh, I do like it when you stop in. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, September 7th. Now, if this is the first time you've been here, thank you. I do appreciate it. We like to talk about OTC and penny stocks that have potential. Now, if you've been here many, many times and heard me say this many, many times, I've got this to keep you entertained. This is news I have personally looked at over the last four or five days, so it's all current news. These are penny stocks on the OTC market. Oldest is up at the top, newest is down here at the bottom. Now, I point out they're penny stocks on the OTC because there are penny stocks on the major exchange. Any stock up to $5 is a penny stock regardless of what market it's sold on. So we could easily be looking at major exchange stocks as well. At this point, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website because we look at a ton of OTC stocks, which means we're doing a ton of research. And isn't it nice to have a place that's never outdated? That's what this site is. It's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. I'm not wasting my time going over to Google searching for all the different information I need. No, I'll start here. If I can't find it, then I'll go to Google. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. I've already refreshed this page, so these are the correct numbers, and they're pretty sad. Our dollar volume has not increased from yesterday, 1.9 billion, still under our old average of $2.1 billion a day. Share volume has fallen. We're getting away from 10 billion. I was hoping to stay over it. We're now down at a crucial 7.2 billion. This is really sad, folks. And our trades, we almost hit 300,000 yesterday, but now we're back hovering over the floor of 250,000 at 265. So it's a sad day. Thank God this doesn't affect every single stock on the market. There are still stocks that make good gains, even on these sad, bad days. And I've got a few of them to share with you. Come on. First stock we're going to take a look at is on the major exchanges. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. It is under five bucks. This is ticker ALNA, Alina Pharmaceuticals. Finished the day at 7.5 cents. Now that's under five bucks. Heck, that's under a dollar. Way, way under a dollar. And that's a problem. On the NASDAQ, they've got minimum price requirements up there. Your stock price cannot fall under a dollar and stay there for too long. They'll just kick you off the NASDAQ market and throw you down to the OTC. So they got to get that price of seven and a half cents up. Now she had a filing come out on the second of this month. Lots of big, big news in there. So this was actually flying today. I know there's only 3% on the board, but she was up 150% earlier. She did come down fast and furious and slammed into her 200 and bounced right off of it. And right now, after market hours, she is still resurging. But I'm a little confused, and I'll explain why here in just a minute. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us over here that Alina Pharmaceuticals is a biopharmaceutical company that leverages its novel oral biological platform to discover, develop, and commercialize first-in-class oral enzyme therapeutics for difficult-to-treat metabolic diseases. And Alina is currently conducting a Phase two trial program on one of their drugs right now. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Not too bad. 12 times their normal volume plus. She does 12 million normally. Today she did 253 million. Share structure. All right, we don't have a float here. I normally go to the unrestricted shares to get my float, but they've got no information here. We have outstanding share count of 107, so we know it's less than that. But honestly, when I share this information with you, you're going to realize it doesn't matter what the float is. <laughs> so what are their financials? Any money coming in over here? Well, we got nothing absolutely nothing coming in and I would have thought that maybe they just didn't bring it in here because this is a NASDAQ stock on the otcmarkets.com website you're not necessarily going to find all the information for a major exchange stock but look we got all the information down below for these periods so obviously they're just not making any money annually and quarterly zip nothing going on here all right, disclosures is where we get all of our information. They had that 8K come out on the 2nd of this month. Let's see what that says here. Now we got lots of information in this 8K. The problem is none of it is good. You get it. It's all bad news, and still the stock ran today. We're told here that on September 2nd of this year, the company filed for bankruptcy. They went out and got these advisors, SSG, which are going to be selling off their assets. 
Now they do mention that they do restructuring transactions as well. But the more you read, you can see they're not here for restructuring anything. They also go on to tell us, and this is important, the company currently expects that the Chapter 11 filing will result in, among other things, the cancellation of all outstanding shares without any payment or other distribution on account of those shares. Well, that ain't good for us. As previously reported, August 23rd, the company received a letter from NASDAQ. They're about ready to be kicked off. They were told, you're going to be kicked off now unless you file with the panel. So at least they've done that. August 30th, they did file for a hearing with the panel. That's about the only good thing we got going on. They tell us here that they have basically fired all of their employees, including the president, the CEO, and the CFO. They have let them all go. There's no management or employees. This boat is floating around on the water now with nobody at the helm. It's a lost cause, and yet the stock was running today. And then finally down here, they give us the biggest warning you can get. The company security holders are cautioned that trading in the company securities during the pendency of the Chapter 11 case is highly speculative and poses substantial risks. Now, they may put that in all of them, but it is true. If they're telling you up here that the shares are going to be canceled most likely and you're not going to get any payment for them, that's not a good sign. So if you're going to play a stock like this, you play it fast and quick. It's a day trade, an hourly trade. Get in for those runs and get out. Let's take a look at those runs it had today. I think it's still in the midst of one right now. We're over here now at Thinkorswim, my free trading platform, looking at ticker ALNA. And if you like what you see, just mosey on over to TD Ameritrade. Sign up for their free trading account, and you can use this anytime you like. So that is a six-month, four-hour chart. We got an exaggerated high here. Didn't stay up here very long of $1.28 and a low few days ago of about six cents. She has been under the 200 all this time. She has broken a few times or paid for those. And here recently we actually looked at it. May 11th, May 12th, something like that. She had 100% gain on this run, ran up a little high and then pushed strong and then crashed hard. And we are now right back to our original surge line and even broke that and hit a low bubble here. Technicals, he gets technicals look really rough. I don't know what to even say about this. We've got a crossover and the MACD about ready to come up, but the rest just looks like scrambled eggs to me. I don't like it at all. Let's take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. So she was casually falling, started going sideways, waiting for the 200, made an attempt to break that 200 and paid for it nearly. Fell all the way down here, hit that low bubble, and has been bouncing off of that. Technicals doesn't look like she's surviving the bounce. Looks like she's still coming back down. Five day, five minute. So after she hit that low, she did bounce up with no excitement after market, dipped, pre-market was calm, even had a lull here before she took off today. And when she took off, she ran folks from about six cents to 15 cents, about 150%. She then came down very fast with a couple of bounces in there, but not anything to save her, and she hit that 200 hard. She has been riding that 200 all the way, started to climb again here after market hours, bounced off of the 200 haul, and has fallen back down right on top of the 200. Technicals, ah, they, they look like they're sitting on the 200. You really can't tell what's going to go on right now, and I don't expect it to bounce anymore because, well, this company is losing value. Now, what I mean is most bankruptcies don't go bankrupt. The companies just use it as an excuse to take care of debt. And they restructure. And somewhere down the road, they get back in business and that stock takes off. So you can end up getting some good deals. But initially, when these bankruptcies are announced, you get these huge runs. And I can't explain them. So you get bankruptcy notifications off of the NASDAQ and you get a run while it's on the NASDAQ. Then they get kicked off the NASDAQ because they can't keep the price over a buck. It falls from the shark pit down into the piranha pit and we attack it and it gets another bounce down on the OTC market until it crashes. And that's when you can pick it up. You pick it up after the big surges, comes down, everything gets quiet, the restructuring working, nobody's saying anything. That's when you buy the stock. Maybe not everything, but a good amount. And then when it starts to climb, you can add to your position. And when the restructuring's done, she's off and running, and you've got yourself a good payout on your investment.
So I don't believe anything more is going to come from ALNA. This just is, is a atypical play for a bankruptcy stock. So just remember that when you see a new bankruptcy on the market, as soon as you hear it, you may want to consider it's going to have a run, but take your gains. Don't get greedy. Take your gains on the uphill. Don't wait for it to start falling because when they fall, boy, they fall fast. We're going to keep this ball rolling, looking at another penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker SIDU, Side of Space, Inc. She had some big news come out today. Actually, I think it was underappreciated. She is under five bucks, so she is a penny stock, and she's over a dollar. So she's not in any danger zone on the NASDAQ. She looks good. She's at $3.05 with about 15% gains today. So looking at what Side of Space does, they're located in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Great place to be if you're involved with space. They operate from a 35,000 square foot manufacturing, assembly, integration, and testing facility focused on vertically integrated space as a service solutions, including end-to-end -end satellite support. Side of Space also has a broad range of other space as a service offerings, including space-rated hardware manufacturing, design engineering, satellite manufacturing and platform development, launch and support services, data analytics services, and satellite constellation management. If it's space, they do it. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Big. Holy cow, about 64 times her normal volume. She's normally doing about a half a million. Today she did 32 million. Share structure. All right, it's going to be a low float. Outstanding shares is almost 17 million. They don't have any information here. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to look it up and I'm going to throw it up there. And if I can't find anything, I'll throw up three question marks. If I don't remember, there won't be anything up there. So hopefully you see something up there. All right, let's see what our financials are on Saidu. They were making $1.4 at the end of last year, but doing it at a loss. Quarterly, have they had any improvements? Yeah, they've had some improvements. First quarter, they got to keep about a million dollars. Second quarter, eh, about $346,000, and they're doing just under $2 million a quarter. So they are doing something. Disclosures, we've got anything going on over here. Uh, yeah, you had the effect come out, but that is based around the news that we're going to look at right now. Jumping on over to that news. Do they have it here? Thank God I've got my page already. See, this is why I do this. So this is the news. You can see it's here at OTC Market. Sometimes it comes up, sometimes it doesn't. This is big news, folks. Sida Space executes multiple launch agreement with SpaceX. You know who SpaceX is, right? Right, Elon Musk's other baby. The one that has rockets that go up and comes back down and lands standing up. The company that wants to take consumers like me and you to space for entertainment and bring us back home safely. Yeah, that's SpaceX. Launch capacity for five launches of Lizzie Sat TM satellites beginning in 2023. They tell us here that Side of Space Inc. today announced that it has signed a launch agreement with SpaceX for five launches beginning in early 2023. Side of Space has designed and is manufacturing Lizzie Sat TM for its multi mission low Earth orbit satellite constellations operating in diverse orbits. Specifically, Lizzie Sat TM satellites fly custom payloads tailored to maximize customers' return on investment. Citus manufactures 3D printed satellites maximize customer value. Imagine that, they're making satellites, printing them out with 3D printers. The launches will support previously announced contracts with NASA and Mission Helios, as well as prospective customers that Citus continues to layer into its pipeline. There you go, folks. This only got 14% gains. Now, I don't know all that's involved here, but I know SpaceX is a big name. It's got a big man behind it. They could be lined up to do some bigger things. So, Saidu getting business with them, to me, is a big deal. Let's go take a look at that chart. SIDU, six-month, four-hour chart. We got a nice high back here of $12.45. A huge fall down to $1.25 a few months ago. And right now, we're back up to about $3.05. She had a huge jump here. We looked at this. She was at about a buck 40 somewhere in there and went up to about 9.20. Almost 600% jump there. 
fell hard and furious down to the 200 has been bouncing off of that fell under it about a month ago and today is taking another poke at it really crushed it but it's fallen back down here technicals they're warm but they really don't look strong right now lots of volume today you can definitely see that compared to everything else 20 day one hour view so she has been falling with a bounce, but she's been falling under that 200 until today's news where she took off, hit a nice high here, but gave more than 50% of it away by a long shot. And the technicals show exactly that, a good, strong first half of the day, a really bad second half of the day. Looking at our five day, five minute. Well, look at that, all the gains came pre-market. That's the thing with these NASDAQ stocks. They can be traded pre-market, after-market. Now, so can OTC market stocks, but not by me and you. Those are by marketers and brokers. But me and you can trade this. You don't need any special permission or special qualifications. All you need to remember to do is trade your time on your order. It's not a day trade anymore. It's an extended trade. You can have day plus extension. You can have good till canceled plus extension, but you got to have extension. If you don't put extension in your order and you're trying to buy pre-market, It'll just ignore your order. Put extension in there and you can trade just like any other time. So most of these gains all came early. Now we're going to draw our line at the top and the bottom here. And I just want to show you something. We're going to do this with the Fibonacci. You poke the Fibonacci down at the bottom of the trend, come up to the top of the trend and right there. Now I'm going to change this color. That's a horrible color. Let's make this all white so you can see this easy enough. That'll work right there. So I normally draw a line at the top, draw a line at the bottom of the surge, and then I draw that line right there, the middle line, 50%. And I look for the stock to stay above that 50%. Obviously, it was trying at first, and it lost the battle, fell down to this next line. You see how it's bouncing on that? And then it fell, and now it's hanging around this third line. I only draw the 50% line, but the algorithm works with all of these lines. And if you use your Fibonacci and poke the bottom of a, a surge or a fall, or a fall, and then poke the top of it, it'll show you not exactly, but the rough neighborhoods where the price will move to. So if this moves above this line, I can expect resistance right around this area. I can expect it to bounce around a little bit. Doing that each way up. So that can be a very nice tool to use. So I don't see this as running anymore from this chart. It doesn't look like it wants to. Now, we got a perfect pattern here. You can see this, folks. This is my PPO, percentage price oscillator. This measures the percentage of price between increments. Your MACD measures the full price. This is my ADX. This is showing me trend continuation. As long as I have a straight line here, the trend isn't changing. It doesn't matter what direction this is going, as long as the line is continuing on. Well, this shows it is coming down. This one shows the price is falling. You see this mirror image here? It looks like maybe a tube of toothpaste or something. When you see the lines coming together, you know the price is going to fall. Absolutely, without a doubt. They'll get real close and then they'll start to spread apart. Because the trend is changing, this will change direction. And the price starts to go up, this changes direction. And you'll see those spread out. And when they spread, guaranteed your price is going to go up. So we're watching that pattern right there to start to spread. Now you don't get in as soon as it starts. Give yourself some confirmation. Pay insurance. Let a couple green bars go by in the direction you think it's going to go to prove it's going where you want it to go. Then get in. So this is a great setup right now. We're just going to wait for that to separate. And because it is SpaceX, Folks, I think that there's more to come. I think this was underappreciated today. There was a lot of initial excitement, but you can see through the day there was no excitement. There could be another blast of excitement, don't you think? We are now taking a look at a stock that I completely underestimated today by a long shot. This is sticker GZIC. They call themselves GZ6G Technologies, but they also call themselves Green Zebra. Whew, thank God for that. Well, Green Zebra had some huge news come out today. In a nutshell, they made a deal with a Major League Baseball team. Now, this is the first deal they've ever done with a Major League Sports team. How many Major League Sports teams are there? A lot. 
and she ran hard today. Look at this. She finished the day at just a little over eight cents with over 229% gains. She goes out and makes this sort of contract with other teams. We could see huge bounces over and over each time they do this. She is on the middle tier of the OTC. That's the QB. The B stands for better. It's better because you have to audit your financials. That's just going to make them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've also got those green ticks. I tell you to always look for the verified profile and the transfer agent verified. So it all looks good. They've also got independent directors. You need these whenever you uplist. They may have used them to uplist to the QB. I don't know. They're going to need them if they plan to uplist to the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. Not that they've said anything about that. I'm just saying they're going to need them then too. So what does this company do? They tell us that Green Zebra is a smart solutions tech provider focused on developing and acquiring early stage wireless 5G, 6G interactive communication technologies. Products include IPTV, digital displays, virtual reality, AI, data analytics software, and wireless security tools for stadiums, airports, universities, and smart city projects. Those are huge organizations. Those are huge contracts. Our mission is to create shareholder value by creating a family of wireless technology companies specialized in vertical markets that support subsidiary business units. They've definitely got a plan here, and it was running today. What is the relative volume around that news? Is that all? I'm surprised, really. I thought there was going to be a lot more volume, especially with that sort of gains. She's normally doing about 165,000 shares a day. That's it. And today she did 7.1 million shares. What is the share structure on this company? Hey, we got a low float. 6.5 million. We will take it. Financials. Is this company making any money? Well, yeah, a little. They made $78,000, remembering those three zeros, at the end of last year, and they got to keep about half of that. Quarterly? Ooh, things are getting worse. $3,000 and $4,000. The news today will change that. I am sure of that. Disclosures. Anything new over here? It's like 8Ks or something? No, they haven't had anything for a few weeks. So let's jump on over to that news. So they've got news right here today. GZ6G, better known as Green Zebra, formed strategic alliance with Major League Baseball's Texas Rangers. Here is that news. Green Zebra is an enterprise smart solutions provider for cities, stadiums, universities, and other large venues. They announced today that they have signed an exclusive strategic partnership with Major League Baseball team, the Texas Rangers. The agreement is effective immediately. Green Zebra will be managing sponsorship opportunities within the venue across IPTV and fans' mobile devices during the live games and other events. When a stadium guest logs into the venue's Wi-Fi network, Green Zebra's interface launches to provide fans with quick and secure internet access on their mobile devices, including relevant messaging such as food and merchandise discounts, urgent updates such as a stadium or security information across the venue's IPTV. In addition, and this is the big part here, in addition, sponsorship opportunities are provided across Wi-Fi networks operated through Green Zebra's managed service solutions. This allows for smart, connected ecosystems and monetization prospects for sponsors to promote their brand to a captive audience, a huge captive audience. Partnering with Green Zebra Media opens up various marketing opportunities for our company. And that is the senior president of Texas Rangers. So you've got a in-house Wi-Fi for all the fans in the stadium at the time of the game. And they'll get all the information about discounts and specialties and anything bad, an alert, an emergency. And who knows, maybe they'll even start getting close-ups of what's going on in the game and stuff. But the big thing is that they can do sponsorships. No more billboards on the walls and posters on the walls. No, you're going to have advertisements come right through here to, well, thousands and thousands of people, right? And that's millions of people over the year. And this is just one team, the Texas Rangers, just in baseball. What if they go around doing this to all the teams in all the different types of sports? 
wow, this company could really take off. Not just bounces, but some serious growth as well. Let's go take a look at that chart now. But of course, we are looking at a six month, four hour view on GZIC. We got a high bubble back here of $2.09 and a low just a couple of days ago of just over two cents. Would you believe that is 10,000% between those two bubbles? She's been under the 200 all this time and pretty much under the 50 most of the time. And today's volume is out of this world. Look at how high that is. The next highest one is down here. Holy cow. And our technicals, well, they're kind of interesting. We just now have a breakout of our PPO getting across the pink. Change of direction on our ADX. This was falling and now is climbing. And look at how small those price bars are. Once she got above the 50, the price bars got a lot bigger. All of our technicals look good right now. They're all pointing up, aren't they? So it looks fantastic. 20 day, one hour view. Well, 19 days look pathetic. Today looks outstanding. All that volume there. She pushed above the 50, pushed above the 200, and is still pushing after market. And the technicals, come on, folks. You can't get any better than that. Everything is blazing up. Outstanding. Five day, five minute. All right, that's a nice run. We did have a big drop here in the middle. But what's interesting is right here at the beginning of the day, there was lots of volume that came in, but the price was not showing all that volume. This would have been your signal to look at this stock. Boy, once the signal got there, though, she took off and she ran until 10 to 11. Hit almost her high of the day. Fell back here, about 50% she gave away. Hit the 50-day SMA, skirted across that, and then pushed away. And then even after market, she is jumping up and hit a new high bubble. 10 cents. Looking really good, folks. We had volume all day. Volume was actually picking up at the end of the day. Not as much as the beginning, but still going on. Our SMA has just come onto the board for the 200, which would normally scare me. I would think the price would come to it and then push away from it, which it could. But I am thinking that most investors are going to do what I've just done. They're going to do the math. They're going to think about all those sports teams out there and how this company has just hit up their first one. I think this company is going to do big business in the long run. I think every single sports team is going to want in-house Wi-Fi so that they can connect to their fans better and get sponsorship money. Absolutely. You know, I would watch this tomorrow. I see the technicals look like everything wants to continue. Look at this. We're overbought on the five minute after market hours. Definitely watch this tomorrow, folks. Watch this long term. Put it on your news watch. You're going to want to see the news come out before the bell rings so that you can catch the many, many runs that I expect this company is going to have. Now, before you go anywhere, I got a couple of other stocks I want to share with you. You know, I have to whittle this down at the end of the day. I can't show you all the stocks I'm looking at. I got two other stocks that I was considering. We didn't have time for them, so I'm going to give you the ticker and the catalyst, and I'll let you take it from there. The first one is ticker C-U-B-V, Cub V. This is Cuba Beverage Company, ton of shares in the float, $2.1 billion, did 116% gains today. That's because she went pink current. I do believe she was at Pink Limited and jumped to Pink Current. That was it. And you can get that information anytime you want by coming over here to this link, Corporate Actions. Click that. Scroll on down here to Symbol Changes and hit that arrow. Scroll on down to Tier Changes right there. Click that and you get all of them in chronological order. These are all today. And that's the old tier. Pink Limited went to Pink Current. And they show you even the expert markets going pink current, which are definitely opportunities in the waiting. So this information is here, always waiting for you. The other ticker I want to show you is ticker SFLM, SFL Maven. Uh, they have a lot of shares as well in the float, 1.5 billion. They did 71% gains today. Now, this is a company I'm real familiar with. I invested in this probably two years ago when they were into cannabis. Then one day I woke up and they had a news press and said, we're out of cannabis, we're not doing it anymore. What we're going to be doing is high-end jewelry sales on eBay. It's like, what? Really? And most people felt the same way, and the price dropped hard and really has not recovered since then. Well, today they put out a news press about selling jewelry. 
but they're selling it on the metaverse. Check this out, and it's pretty interesting. I think this is going to be hot. SFL Maven, a leading provider of high-end luxury goods, is proud to announce our new products for sale in our metaverse store, located in the Decentraland of metaverse. They're going to be selling wearables in the metaverse. They are going to have wedding uh, wearables and other things, but they're going to have this patented technology. Listen to this. As previously announced, our patent pending technology will allow NFT wearables in the metaverse to show their intrinsic value with a visual feature that immediately identifies the object with real inherent value. You're going to know somebody's wearing cha-ching, including expensive items like wedding rings and engagement rings. And how are they going to do this? It's called the Holo Glow. If you're wearing something expensive that's real, it's going to glow. And your, your character in the metaverse is going to have this glowing jewelry, this glowing wedding band. Your cha-ching is going to glow because it is real value, not made up value. And that is a brand new thing on the metaverse, right? So I think that could be hot. People like to show off. Even in a slow market, you're going to get stocks to run. But you just never know what's going to make them run. It could be great news like a deal with a sports team. Or it could be bad news about a bankruptcy and going out of business. Or it could just be ho-hum. I think the SpaceX news has got more to give. But what do I know? DD will probably answer that question. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.